In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to do some brand new trash to treasure projects. And working with limited supplies, can you make your own black wax? Well, we're about to find out. One quick note before we get started though, if you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. My name's Kelly Sherry. I do a lot of home decor makeovers and furniture flips. I love taking you along as we go thrifting, garage sailing, and flea marketing. So if you're interested in learning how to do some of this, I hope that you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Well, we're going to take some stuff that I have laying around and we are going to refinish them. With the shop opening in less than two weeks, we got to finish some stuff. So if you're ready for a brand new episode of Flea Market Rescue, then let's dive in. All right, you guys, we have about two weeks before our shop opens and we have a few things that we need to kind of make over. Um, this being one of them. I picked this up at the thrift store and it's very tarnished. I tried, you know, cleaning it up and it just wasn't working. So I think I'm gonna paint this white. We're gonna put something like right here and I think it's gonna look awesome. So let's go ahead and get to work. Now before I paint this, we are gonna use this mold. I wanna put this on the front of there. I think it would look really nice and I've been dying to use this mold. So um, this is the Olive Crest Mold by IOD. Yep, we're gonna use this one right here. I think that's gonna look really pretty on this. So what the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little cornstarch. I'm gonna starch, you know, cornstarch that up. And then I have my magic skull. I'm just gonna make a piece for that and we're gonna put it on there. So I have some of this cornstarch and a stiff brush. You wanna always cornstarch your molds because otherwise it will definitely stick. You should have seen one of the first times I did this, it was like, oh, it was not good at all. Totally got stuck in the mold. All the detail, I had to try to pry it out. So just save yourself the headache and use some cornstarch. I like to shake off the extra powder in the sink, is, and that's what I'm gonna do right now. And as you can see, it's lightly dusted. Now we're gonna use this magic skull. So what you do is you mix two equal parts. We're gonna use one part of the white resin and one part of the hardener. I like to wear gloves when I'm mixing it because this white part, this the white resin here is really sticky. I just have like this stick. It's kind of like just a tool. And we're just gonna mix up enough for that piece. Okay, so again, you're gonna take two equal parts, you're gonna mix it together. And you're gonna twist and just keep on mixing it. And then when you don't see any more of this gray here, then you know it's mixed properly. It should all look white. So I'm just gonna keep doing that and then we'll put it in our mold. All right, so there is no more of that gray. It's only white. Now I usually take the gloves off because it's not as tacky as it once was. And basically what you're gonna do with your IOD mold, I'm just gonna move that over so you can see and there's no shadow. You're gonna take little pieces of it and stick it right in this mold here. As you can see, see it's lifting right up. Now, if you didn't have cornstarch, there would be no chance that was coming up. Okay, so that's all in there really good. And what I do next is I take a little cornstarch and I tap it on there. 
and then I just take my hand and smooth this all out. It kind of removes whatever you need to remove. And then I got a really good tip from a viewer long ago who told me, you know what, just pop these right in the refrigerator and they get cold and then like 15 minutes later, you'll pull them out and they just come right out of the mold. It was the best advice ever because when you try to pull these out of the mold, yeah, it's gonna come out, but sometimes it gets a little distorted you get a perfect shape every single time if you pop them in the freezer. So that's what we're gonna do with this right now. But you just wanna pop that in the freezer. And I think it should be good. Let's see here. So let's try to pop that out. See how that comes out in one nice piece like that if you put it in the freezer, so. The freezer, I think, is the way to go for sure. So what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna put this piece right on here. It's still pliable, but it's, you know, hard at the same time so you can work with it. I'm gonna use some of this tight bond and we're just gonna put that right on the back of here and glue it on there. I always use tight bond when I do like furniture applique pieces. So I'm just gonna put some glue on the back here. My glue is old, so I'm having to put the back of the brush in there just to get some glue on there. All right, so I'm gonna place that right on this here. Make sure it's right in the center because once it's on there, it's pretty much on there if you're using tight bond. Just gonna move it over just a little bit before it dries. Yikes. Okay, I think that looks great right where it's at. We're gonna let that dry overnight on there and then we're gonna paint this. It is the next morning and this has dried beautifully. So let's go outside and paint this. I am using Flat Protective Enamel by Rust-Oleum. We're gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and do another coat if we need to. After the head dried, I turned this over and I spray painted everything underneath. It definitely needed it. So I just brought this in from outside and I do see a couple spots that I need to kind of go over. But I want to show you that I actually, you can see it better this way. I got a couple drips here when I painted it upside down. So I'm gonna show you an easy way of getting rid of them. Now what I do to get rid of drips, I take a little sandpaper and I just kind of smooth that out. Just wanna make sure that's nice and smooth. And then I just go over it again, just with a little bit more spray paint and you're good to go. See like right down here, I see there's something there. Let's try to scratch that off. So that's nice and smooth. So you would take this back outside and you would just spray it again in those areas. Easy way to get rid of drips when you're spray painting. All right, so I think this came out absolutely beautiful. I actually wanna add some dark wax, but the problem is I've already moved 
most of my stuff to the shop. So all I have here is clear wax and a little bit of acrylic paint. So we're gonna make our own dark wax. I'm actually gonna make black wax. I actually learned this from Karen from a Step Back in Time Vintage. She sells that awesome junk monkey paint and she had told me that she makes her own wax and I thought, oh, okay, that's possible, huh? With the wax, I make my own colors of wax by mixing in a little bit of the um, milk paint. So you can mix like the black soot milk paint, mix, uh, mix it with a little bit of wax and then you have like black wax. Oh my you gosh. Blue wax, you can have any color you want. Do you By hear just that? mixing in just a little bit of the powder changes the whole color. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to try that too. So I thought, you know what, let's try it. And all I had was acrylic paint, so why not? Let's give it a try. I'm gonna take a little of this Annie Sloan Clear Wax and put it in here, and I'm gonna add some acrylic paint to it. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little of this clear wax into here. All right, so now we have a little of that in here, and I'm gonna take a little dot of paint. We're gonna just kind of mix that together. Just one dot. Well, don't you know it won't come out? All right, so I'm gonna scoop it out. Okay, so I got a little scoop on here. I have this paint right here, and I'm just gonna So here's the consistency, you can see that. So I'm gonna put that on a paper towel and we're gonna wipe that on. I'm gonna wipe this on here. I think we need a little more clear wax. We got a little too much paint. It's one more scoop. Again. All right, let's see what happens. Pretty excited. You guys, this is just like using the black wax. It really is. So yes, you can add paint to your wax and make whatever kind of finish you want. So if you used brown paint, that would be dark wax. Since I used black, this is black wax. Easy peasy. By adding that black wax, it just gave this whole piece a lot of dimension, and I think it came out really good. So if you really wanted, you could um, put something right here in the middle. You could put like a bird, you could put a number. It would look really cool on there. Right now, um, I don't have anything because again, half the stuff is at my shop, but I probably will put some numbers on here. And let's finish decorating it with this Walmart greenery I have. So I'm just gonna take this whole bunch and I think I'm just gonna bend the stem and simply place it in here. And I think this would be a really good seller. When you're displaying stuff, especially on a table at a vintage market, you want to have stools or little benches, things that you can build up with. Like if you had this 
bench, for instance, you could have that item on top, you could have stuff underneath. It just really adds a lot of height. And so I suggest if you see these, pick them up. They might be the wrong color or whatever, but you can paint them and they'll look fabulous on your display. I have this little stool here that I bought. It's green. How much did I pay for it? Five ninety nine. I don't really care for this Hunter's Green. It just reminds me of the 80s. So we're just gonna kind of update it a little. All right, so we're gonna paint our little bench with Dixie Belle French Linen. I've been wanting to use this paint, so let's check it out. And once this is dry, we'll go ahead and we'll paint the bottom of it. See how using a stool can really give your items some height? It just it adds a little more interest to the eye. You can put stuff at the bottom, you can put stuff on top, and it just really looks nice. And just remember when you're looking at these stools, again, if it's not the right color, it's just paint. That's all you have to do is add a coat of paint. All right, you guys, I picked this up from the thrift store and it's like a bird cage. I mean, this is all right, but I think we can do so much better. And look at the bird, he's all faded. So it was $4.99 and let's go ahead and redo it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is tear out these flowers here. So I'm just gonna pull all this out. Now I do like this, so we're gonna keep that. I think um, I'm gonna get it out though for right now just because I'm gonna spray this and I don't want any of this to get sprayed white. It looks like there's just a wire here that I can untwist. All right, so it was just a wire. I've unscrewed that or untwisted that. We'll put this off to the side because we're going to use that. So I'm going to take this outside and we're going to spray it. You know, I was going to spray this white, but on second look, I think I'm going to keep it like this. So I'm just going to put that wire back on and then we're just going to decorate this here. So let me go ahead and attach the wire once more and then we'll decorate this. Now see, that is the beauty of kind of like you know, you just kind of got to create as you go. Some things you might have in your head, an image of what you want to do, but then when you look at something, it might not quite go. Like, I think the white would have not been a good choice. So I have this little plate. I want to put this on the back here. I think this is going to give like a French country kind of feel to it. I got this little chicken at um, Target. It was $3. It's all that flocked green. Love that. So we'll cut the tag and we're gonna put that, add that in. So we'll put him or her, I should say, up in front. What way do we want? Maybe like this. That in the back. I kind of like that. All right, so let me just kind of figure this out a little bit, and then if we need to add a little more, we can. But right now, I think this is kind of cute. It has like a cute little French country kind of look to it. Now, in order to make this all stay, we're gonna make a little slot right here that the plate can rest in so it's not moving around. And then we'll put a little stick at the bottom of our chicken so that we can push that down into the styrofoam. So let's do that right now. All right, so the plate rests about right here. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna kinda make a slot Let's 
kind of push that plate down into that slot. Just want to push that down. We can even glue that too, just so it's not moving around. Okay, so that's not rolling around or anything like that. I can take my hands off. And, but I think we might hot glue that too. And then now it's time to take that stick and we'll put that in our chicken. So again, with my scissors, I am gonna make a hole in the bottom of him. And we're gonna stick that stick in there. We can also hot glue that in place and that will secure the chicken. So I'm just gonna take a little hot glue. We're gonna put that in the hole and then we'll put our stick in there and then we will stick that down into the styrofoam. Let's go ahead and hot glue this plate in place too. I'm gonna put a little hot glue right in here. That way we know that the plate is not going anywhere. Just gonna push that down real good. I think that looks cool. I'm gonna add a little dab of glue too, just so that it holds against this wire here. Just want to hold that in place just for a minute or two. Now I know this plate is going nowhere. I love this little plate. Do you see the little? It reminds me of that toil, if I'm saying that correctly. Love that. Now we need to figure out where should we make a hole for our chicken. I'm going to slide the chicken in there, right in the front. should go in there. Pretty tight with the plate in there. And let's see where we can put him. I think right here would be good. So I'm gonna make a hole right there and then we'll press our stick down and glue it in place. So you just wanna make a hole about right there. We'll press him down. I think we need to make the stick a little shorter. All right, I had to shorten the stick a little just because there's something really solid in this base that the stick wouldn't go through. So I'm gonna put our chicken back in there and then we'll go ahead and press that back down. That should be fine, yep, there we go. That's perfect. Now, just as an added precaution, we're gonna add a little hot glue in here and press our chicken down even further. All right, we'll press him down. I'm gonna hold him for a minute and then we'll go from there. As you can see, there was a little piece of styrofoam right here missing. So I just took a little piece off the back and we're just gonna add it on the front. Press that right down on top. All fixed. All right, now I think this is really cute, but I think I'm gonna take a piece of burlap and put that on the back. This way this will stand out even more. I have this old feed sack that I got in Springfield Um, we use this on another project to make pumpkins. And I think this would look really awesome behind there. I'm just not sure, should I use these numbers on the back? That might make it a little more interesting. I don't know. I'm going to cut a piece that's going to measure the size of the back. All right, we're going to cut that burlap that I have place that out. I think I probably am gonna, I 
Okay, I'm gonna kind of use that. I like the, I like the numbers on it. So maybe we'll have this off to the side here like that. So I'm just gonna cut this bag. So I'm just gonna cut like maybe a quarter inch around So I decided the probably the best way to attach that burlap is to just cut a piece of cardboard out. So I have this box that's from Walmart. We are gonna draw a pattern all the way around. And then we're just gonna simply cut that out and then glue the burlap. I think that's just gonna be the easiest way to attach it. Okay, so we have this all drawn out. I'm gonna take a razor blade and we are gonna cut that. You're probably like, oh my God, you're gonna cut through your counter. No. It, this razor blade will not go through. I cut a lot of boxes all the time and I'm lucky to get it to go through one layer. So we're completely fine. And again, I've been working on this counter for many years. So we're about due for another counter. You know what you guys, I think this is gonna be the last trash to treasure done on this counter because we're gonna be moving to uh, the shop and all the projects are gonna be done there. So say goodbye to the counter, you guys. We're moving on up like the Jeffersons. We sure did do a lot of projects on this counter, didn't we, you guys? From making over some ugly vases to the baking soda method chicken. We even did this cute little sheep tray. Do you guys remember that? We made paper clay carrots, and we even poured candles on this counter. And the counter was the whole reason I met Delaine Wright. Oh she That's would cute. write in the comments, hey, countertop twin, because she had the same counter. So I took a drive out to Lansing. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video, make sure you do. It's hilarious. You know, I'm really going to miss doing projects on the counter. But we've done a lot of great things. And this is not the end. We're going to do more projects, but it's just going to be in the new shop. Let me know in the comments, what was your favorite project on the counter? All right, let's get back to our birdcage project. All right, so now that we have our pattern cut out, I'm gonna place this on top of it. I want the numbers to show, so we have to make sure that they're gonna show. And I can fill the sides of the cardboard so I know that they will show through. All right, so now, now that we know this is lined up really good, I can fill the sides of the cardboard. We're just gonna start gluing that on there. I just have a little bit of hot glue and we're simply gonna put a little hot glue on there and then press it down. All right, now that I have it glued on, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna kind of tuck the sides around. 
We're probably gonna have to trim a lot of this off, but. Okay, now we have this all done. On the back, we can put like some construction paper just to give it a little finished look. Um, and then we're gonna attach this by hot gluing this as well to the back. And I think it's gonna look really awesome. I'm gonna glue this cage onto the back here. I'm just going to put a really thin bead that you're not going to be able to see and press down this cage onto it. Just putting a little bit underneath that wire here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think this looks awesome. All right, let's go ahead and stage it. What do you say? Remember when I told you about adding height to something with the example of the stool? Well, this chicken would look awesome on this crate but this crate is just way too white. So we need to make it look a little more aged and that's what we're gonna do. Let's kind of take some brown paint and make it look like stain on this. I'm just using a little bit of apple barrel paint. It's called nutmeg brown. You can use any kind of brown. I'm just using this because that's all I got right now. But I'm using a little bit of water too because the water will really help the paint go on a lot easier. We don't want to spend all day painting this, you know? Our crate's dry. I'm going to use a little of this uh, Mississippi mud. I'm just taking this Mississippi mud and I'm just putting it on sporadically just to give it a little more, you know, color that makes it look kind of aged or maybe even a little dirty, just so it's not brand spanking new. So now that we're done layering the paint of that, we're gonna take a little black and sporadically put it in different areas on the crate to also give it another appearance of being old. So how I like to blend my colors is using a little bit of sandpaper. And I think an old crate is perfect to display our chicken in the cage. I love how our projects came out and I cannot wait to add them to the store. Don't forget, our store opens in less than two weeks. For those of you who can make it, I am so excited to meet you and I'm excited for you to see the new shop. For those of you who can't make it, I totally understand and I will have a video so that you can see what it took to put the store together from beginning to end, and you will see opening day. So again, we're opening on April 29th, and we'll be open between the hours of 11 and 5. We're gonna have a lot of great home decor. There's gonna be food and beverages. We're gonna do some raffles. One of the raffles being Debbie's Flying Pig. And then also you get to meet me, my mom, and Debbie, and just chat with us. So we hope to see you on opening day. Now this is normally where I would show you everything that was gonna be in tonight's online sale. However, I had to postpone it. I am so sorry. You guys, I ended up breaking my ankle. 
I have a week and a half before the shop opens. Things are just so stressful and I just really need to postpone it. I hope you understand. I promise I'll make it up to you. But for tonight, online shopping has been postponed. Well, that's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. I'm Kelly Sherry and this has been Flea Market Rescue.